we all chase our dreams, and certainly I do chase my dreams. And isn't it ironic that half of our lives we spend chasing wealth, and the rest of our lives we spend chasing health? Would you be rich and sick, or poor and young? That's always the question. But still, every morning we wake up to do what we believe we should do. And I definitely did. I'm a serial technology entrepreneur. I've raised 1.5 million euros for a startup. I've done management consultation for large companies. I've been doing that work, thinking that that's the most important work that I need to do. And I definitely didn't sleep enough doing that. And one day, I woke up with chronic pain. It started with just like pain in the gut during the day. And when I ate something, it went away. So I thought it's just that I have an empty stomach or something like this. And then it started happening even when I ate. I started getting fatigued. And that's the moment when I did what most of us do. I went to a doctor. And I got prescribed pills to help me with the ulcer that was diagnosed. I just turned 30. Usually, usually these kind of stress-related problems are for more older people. So by my lifestyle, I'd caused myself this kind of painful situation. And I got some medication. And that took the pain away, but it didn't bring the energy back into my body. And after six, seven weeks, what I realized, once the medication ran off, the pain came back. And I went back to the doctor, and I got prescribed more. And what I did at this point, when I understood that the pain is not going to go away, by having more medication. I definitely don't want to be one of those people who are going to be spending the rest of their lives using medication. I went online. I started researching. And I don't trust gurus. I don't trust health experts. So I went to the research. I went to PubMed. It's an online database of uh, medical literature. And I went really deep into it. I'm a systems thinker. and. While researching this topic, I understood when I started from ulcers, getting into inflammatory disease, gut issues, and so on, I had caused an imbalance in my system. Our bodies are made out of different kinds of systems that strive for something that in medical literature we can describe as homeostasis, the balance of things. And the work that I had done had caused an imbalance that then led to an inflammatory disease. You're a complex system. When something breaks down, they start to look at what system is it. Is it in the nervous system? Is it some kind of organ? Is it in the musculoskeletal system? What is it? And then we take a microscopic view of what's going on, perhaps there in the blood stream. We might look at uh, x-ray. And then we take a macroscopic view, and we look at your lifestyle. What might have caused that? What led to this situation? And what I started doing, I started designing my own protocol of healing. So based on all the research that I read, I took a very holistic view of how to kind of attack the problem that I had. So first and foremost, I started sleeping more, which is a pretty good idea. I got into stress management techniques, breathing techniques, meditation. I got into diets. I started looking at a diet where I could reduce the inflammation and where I could basically avoid food items that might cause it and give things to my body that help to heal myself from that condition. And I was also looking at exercise, but not too much of it, just right. And from the work that I've done in businesses, looking at what's outside of us as organizations, you know, we look at key performance indicators. We have KPIs for our business. Now, an organization is made out of individuals. And do you have the key performance indicators for yourself, how you're doing? 
because collectively those really matter because that really channels your potential to the work that you do. Peter Drucker is a very well-known management expert and consultant and he has said that what gets measured gets managed. So I started looking at how can I make this black box visible and the answer was quantified self, self-knowledge through numbers. I start gathering with different kind of variables and lab tests and self-measurements information about what's going on here. So when I start implementing my protocol, I would know what is the 20% that could result in 80% of improvement. So I could eliminate things that don't work and I could focus on things that seem to work and to better understand myself. And that created very interesting feedback loops. After eight weeks, I didn't have the pain anymore. And more importantly, what happened, this protocol that was supposed to be just temporary, it showed me that my cognitive capabilities, my ability to solve problems, my energy levels, they were higher than ever before. So my brain started to function really well. And this was just a very good example of when you understand yourself as a system, uh, when you fix your body, it will fix your brain as well. So there is very well known uh, a theory on the gut-brain axis. And if you look into the east, they always talk about the life force that it exists here, qi or qi energy. And we know that if your gut is damaged and you let all kinds of inflammatory compounds through your gut lining into your bloodstream, that will make your immune system attack yourself and that can lead to autoimmune disease and many other things. It can damage the blood-brain barrier and it can cause chronic fatigue, uh, brain fog and all kinds of other things. Another thing that I noticed when I went forward was that I had always suffered of seasonal allergies. So my immune system was overreacting to pollens from trees. Suddenly when the summer came along, I didn't have those symptoms anymore. I didn't have to take the antihistamines that I had been taking. So I basically, through my anti-inflammatory diet and lifestyle interventions, I had silenced my immune system. It was no longer overreacting to the presence of external proteins coming through my sinuses. So this is biohacking. It's the art and science of taking control of your own health, well-being, and performance. It's a systems thinking approach where you see yourself as a system, just like a computer system, and you ask the question, how can I optimize this? How can I understand it better? The computer system that our biology is, it's a very intricate system. Here is a picture of the different metabolic pathways that this is made out of. And it strives for balance. If there is too much something, it will try to balance things out. And if you look at your genes, that's the programming. I mean, we all live forever. Our cells will divide and pass the genes on to the next generation. We are alive as long as is needed for this process to happen. But in our lifetimes, we can better understand how true evolution, where we're adapted to the environment and how you can live to your strengths from genetic perspective. For example, in my case, I have higher risk for celiac disease. It's not diagnosed, but definitely if I continue eating wheat, I could trigger that health condition. I live in the Northern Hemisphere. From my genetic standpoint, when it comes to vitamin D, I have higher needs. So I have to supplement 10 times more than other people. So you have to do the research. You have to look into the data to understand what's good for you. And that gets us to biosignals and bioinformatics. So when I start sleeping more, I paid attention to the duration of the sleep, but I also started paying attention to the different sleep stages that I get. It's not just seven and eight hours of sleep that you need to get per night, but how much deep sleep you get or how much REM sleep you get when you consolidate memories that you learn throughout the day. But I'm also looking at my nervous system balance, how my nervous system is recovering from daily chores. So if you look at the autonomous nervous system, uh, you can basically understand that by looking at the heart signal and the distance between heartbeats, not just heart rate, but the distance between those. And what it will give you, like this ring gives for me, 
is a better understanding of the balance between the sympathetic nervous system, which is the fight or flight, the reason why we get things done, the reason uh, why you know, we can run from a lion or hunt for food, and the parasympathetic nervous system, the rest and digest, once we are successful, once we have succeeded that, once we rest back in the camp, or when we read stories to our kids, or when we meditate or do breathing exercises, that's when we activate that. It's supposed to be that when we sleep, our parasympathetic nervous system is highly active. But if you stress yourself all day long, when you go to sleep, your nervous system is still in an alert mode. If you find yourself waking up after four hours of night sleep, maybe you are running you know, a little bit too fast. Maybe you should take a little break. So it's a balance of things. And we can see the results in biomarkers when we measure things that are going on in the body. What I've been successful in doing, from a genetics perspective, I have high risk for kidney disease. I've been able to, in the last four years, really kind of reverse any risk when it comes to kidney disease. Another thing is when you look at my blood sugar control, I have high risk for diabetes. I've basically taken myself out of a risk of getting diabetes. Um, the other thing that I find really nice also is that my cardiovascular risk is low. Um, as well as when you look at my testosterone, when I started, my testosterone levels looked like I'm a 50-year-old man. Now it looks like I'm less than 24. <laughs> so I don't have the old man syndrome anymore. Health is to be in balance, and imbalance leads to disease. This is what I learned hard way. I hope that you don't have to learn it the hard way, but most people do, unfortunately, when it comes to health. But what is really promising is the data that we can gather now. The future of health is in the data. It's not just your medical records. It's the kind of data that you can gather throughout your day to better understand how your lifestyle eventually then influences your biomarkers. And what bioinformatics will do for health is what the microscope did for biology or what the telescope did for astronomy. It will give us a much bigger view of what's going on as well as it will provide, through our relations with machines and machine learning and algorithms, it can give us an idea how we can optimize our lifestyles in relationship to our genes. And this is a very holistic issue if you want to live long and happy your life. It's a, it's a combination of multiple variables. And what works for someone else doesn't necessarily work for you. This is really important to remember. But in medicine, the only thing that we really had was reductionism. Breaking down you know, the things into what is the gene that causes this, or what is, you know, the, for example, your blood sugar value or your cholesterol level, and then extrapolate and to, to basically look at the whole population and think that everyone is like this. But every one of us is an individual. And what has happened through this approach in healthcare is that it's not healthcare, it's sick care. Most of the money goes into sick care, treating symptoms and treating things when it's too late. We have to move from this type of healthcare, sick care, to true healthcare, which is preventive medicine, which is preventive healthcare, which takes a holistic view of what's going on. And you know what? We can all contribute our data for this greater cause. We can map through the relationships from our genetic data as well as through our lifestyle how the, the epigenetics might influence your health and well-being today. We can fix healthcare because it's much cheaper to prevent disease than it is to treat once you're already sick. Thank you very much.